Welcome back, and let's get this cute little elephant ready for 3D printing. So, first things first, let's do our shortcut, Alt-Shift-M. Oh, and we can't do it because we're in object mode, so we'll do tab. And actually, it did it for us. So again, Alt-Shift-M, we'll just toggle that, or you can toggle it right here. Make sure you have overhang and 45. Now we can kind of just do any last minute checks for anything that may be kind of too extreme of an angle for our 3D printers. That way we don't have to have any supports. So I'm gonna go into point mode or just hit one on your keyboard and hit G and Z and just move that one up just a little bit just to take away some of that red. And then just look anywhere else. Maybe even fix these so we can do a loop cut or we can do control R and do one right there. And it's gonna want us, you know, once you click once, it, um, it applies it, but then it once you, you know, it, it'll let you slide it around. Um, and if you move it, you can always just hit zero and click and that will lock it in. And so we'll go to line mode and I'm just gonna grab that line right there, hit G and Z and just bring it on up till we lose some of that. Till we lose some of the red. And just look at that. I'm gonna go back into this. And that looks pretty good. It probably would have printed fine, but you know, just to be safe, I just wanna show you uh, the power of this kind of like real time uh, mesh analysis. The tail looks good. We've got some on our ears, but it's not red, so it's okay. What do we got here on the trunk? I was worried about the trunk, but the trunk looks pretty good. Uh, you know, if we wanted to, to, to adjust that, we could. We could just go into, we could just uh, hit line mode and then just double click on the line or um, alt double click. Sometimes, depending on how you have your preferences, you may have to hit alt double click. But yeah, alt click should do a loop select. So notice I can just click one or if I alt click or double click, it will select the entire loop around. And I'll just go to side view and we can hit G, you know, kind of move those around if we want. We can do double click there or alt double click and hit G, kind of move that. And notice the color is changing in real time just to make sure we don't have any red. And really, you know, we didn't have to do that, but just want to show you in case you do have some extreme red on your trunk, you can adjust and, and fix that. You could also go into side view and hit R, you know, and rotate these if you needed to. So just hit R, G. So really just kind of tweaking things if you need to. But I'm pretty happy with this. So let's go back, go ahead and turn our mesh analysis off. Alt Shift M and let's go ahead and get it ready for 3D printing. So notice that our eyeballs are different colors. So that's that's kind of an indicator to me that we forgot to Boolean these eyes together. So an easy way to do that is just click on the pupil and then shift click on the eyeball and do control plus and notice that they became the same color. And that's how you know you've Booleaned. You've also got this nice wireframe to show you that the Boolean operation hasn't been applied. And then now we're gonna click on the eyeball and shift click on the elephant and do control plus. And notice it's all changed to the same color and so that is what we want. And this right here, the white on the tusk, that is because we added a second material. So, you know, if we deleted that, it would uh, go away. And that's how you know, you know, everything is all one mesh and it is ready to be 3D printed. So let's click on the elephant, go to our 3D printing toolbox tab. We can check all. It says we've got some non-manifold edges. And so if we hit edit, and go into here. If we click on non-manifold edge, it's really just saying that because we have our, our mirror modifier applied. So if I toggle that off, you know, it's just the 3D print toolbox thinks that this is um, open. You know, it's not watertight or sealed, but in reality it is, so we can ignore that. And it says we have some intersecting faces and that is saying it is right here. So, what? I'm not sure what is intersecting there. 
Uh, what we can do is turn off our subdivision surface. And look at that. That looks pretty cool. We got this really boxy elephant. But what I think is the culprit is that these, these highlighted polygons here, or faces, are just right on top of each other. So let's go into point mode. And let's grab maybe the top point of the ear right here. And this next one. And just kind of separate them a little bit. So we'll do G and Y. And just kind of, you know, pull them back just a little bit. See if that helps. And maybe do this one too. You can kind of see where this uh, line right here is kind of maybe touching this, uh, this eye socket right there. So let's do G and Y. Kind of give it some space. That may do the trick. We may even have to do the inner bottom part of the ear right there too. So I'm just going to go to point mode with one and do G and Y and just kind of give some space in between here. And then there's one right down in here. Sometimes it's hard to see. You can go into x-ray mode and that may make it even a little trickier. We can turn off our mirror just to simplify things. And those look like that that dot right there. That point right there looks like it's right on top of our, our eye socket. So we'll do G and Y and just back it off just a little bit. And that may do the trick. So now let's say check all. Hey, all right. So that got rid of our intersecting faces. I don't think it would have kept us from printing successfully, but you know, that's what the 3D Print Toolbox is for. So thank you, 3D Print Toolbox. We'll turn on our subdivision surface and our mirror, and we're back in business. So now we can export it, or you can go back to object view, make sure everything looks good. Make sure you have your elephant selected, and go ahead and tell Blender where you want to send the file. So just click this little file folder, and I just have an STLs folder here. So we want the elephant to land in there. We'll hit accept, and then make sure your format is STL and hit export. And there we go, we've got some confirmation. And let's go open this in the slicer of our choice. So I'm using Simplify 3D here. We'll go ahead and hit import, go into our STLs folder, and get our box animal elephant. Hit open. Hey, and looky there, we've got this adorable, super cute elephant. I'm loving it. Uh, one thing I would like to do is kind of increase the subdivision surface on it. So let's go ahead and clear that out. Let's go back into Blender. And in our subsurf modifier, let's increase that to four. And that way we get a really nice smooth um, elephant. We may even do the same on the eyes. Let's add a subsurf, subdivision surface. Maybe do like two or three. That's fine. What was the elephant? The elephant's at four. Maybe we just do that. Click on our wireframe for our eyes. Just go ahead and change that to four. And actually that's too much. You can kind of see like the difference in the eye socket is still kind of blocky, uh, but the this is extremely smooth. So we don't need it to be that smooth. We can maybe crank it down, do a subdivision surface of one, and then we can do the same. Well, the pupils look pretty good. So everything's kind of the same amount of smoothness. And then we'll just click on the elephant and hit export again. And it will just simply overwrite it. Go back into our slicer, import the new elephant. And there we go. Now it's looking much smoother, much cuter. And let's check our settings. So we have a 20% infill. Uh, we don't need a raft because we chopped off the feet there and made them flat. So we'll get a nice strong foundation. And then in our layers, we can do 0.2 layer height and the shells of two. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And that's looking amazing. It looks great. We don't have any weird geometry going on there. So what I'm always looking for here is that the infill pattern is everywhere. You know, so mainly like on the eyes where we did the booleans, if it's, if there's a mess up, you will still see like the inner part of the sphere here. But since the Boolean operation has been applied, um, you know, the infill 
is inside of this whole inner eye cavity. And that's what you want. You want everything to be kind of welded together. See how these edges are kind of curving um, and kind of melted together right here? That's what you want. So this looks great. And we'll just slide it on up. And it doesn't look like we're going to need any rafts, any supports. And this thing will just literally appear on our print bed and be ready to, you know, be played with. And one thing that I just noticed, uh, usually I like the pupils to be um, a subtraction boolean. So let's go back into Blender and just click on our little eyeballs here. And we actually have to click on the parent boolean. So it's actually the the eyeball and look for our boolean with the pupil and just switch that to difference. There we go. And that will cast a nice little shadow um, whenever we go to 3D print. It'll look a little, little more better. I just like that style um, a little more whenever things are 3D printed. So now we can just click on elephant, go to our 3D print toolbox, add on and hit export again. And it'll just overwrite that file again and go back into our slicer, just delete that one and just bring it on right back in. Yeah, so that, you know, you can do either or, whichever you prefer, but I like that um, just when you go to slice it and print it, um, it just casts a little shadow on the inside of a pupil, kind of like um, um, how they do with statues. You know, the pupils are kind of just illusions, um, but that's just a personal preference that I like. So now let's print that thing.